If we can do anything else, uh, please let us know. We hope you have a great class. All right, Jess, over to you. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome. My name is Jess Francisco, and I am teaching a class with you all today on behalf of Ranger and Michaels. I'm so excited to spend some time with you and get inky. We're going to be doing some alcohol flowy techniques today. And I'm really excited to share with you the alcohol inks, how they work, the materials that you're going to use on them, uh, and kind of just how to make these projects. I know that this has been a really exciting topic in the craft industry lately, uh, and I'm really, really excited to share all of this with you. So a little bit about me, just so you guys know who I am. Um, again, my name is Jess. Feel free to ask any questions that you may have in the chat. I also have Patty from Ranger here with me as well, who will be answering questions and providing links if you all need that. Um, but I am a creative entrepreneur. I manage a YouTube channel called Love Jess. Formerly, it was called A Card Day's Work. Uh, and I have been paper crafting and doing card making and things like that for several years now, but I've been crafting for just about as long as I can remember. Uh, and I have just been sort of evolving and changing as I go along. And this is one of the things that I absolutely love to do as well. So uh, alcohol inks are near and dear to my heart. If you guys are looking to connect after the class, you can find me on social media at Love Jess Co. Um, that's on YouTube and on Instagram, things like that. If you guys want to share your projects, feel free to tag us. You can do at Ranger Inc, um, at Michael's, um, Michael's Stores, or at Love Jess Co. And we'll be able to see all that you guys are working on in the class today if you guys make samples of the project as well. Um, I know everyone was popping in and saying where they're from. Um, I'm located in Virginia in the United States. I actually saw someone say they were from Richmond. That's probably maybe an hour and a half from me. Um, so that's really exciting. Um, from Fort Lauderdale, awesome. Thank you all so much for popping in the chat and saying hello. It makes me feel a little more connected to you all and seeing your pictures and everything. Um, so I really love that. Well, we'll go ahead and jump right in. Like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to pop them into the chat uh, and then we'll just keep going from there. I'm from Hanson. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. I'm in Chesapeake. So we're not, we're not that far away. We're like neighbors. <laughs> Um, hi, Anna. Hello, hello. All right, we're going to go ahead and switch to the desktop view. So hang tight for just a second. All right, perfect. We should be good to go with our desktop view. So this is a sample of the project that we're going to be making today. Uh, so we're going to be using alcohol inks to achieve this flowy look. Hi there, I'm on the Pacific Coast. Hello, Ellen. Welcome. Hello in Kansas City. <laughs> from Jamaica. Oh my goodness. Veronica. Hello. Oh, thank you so much. Um, frequently Richmond and Char Charlottesville. That's awesome. Hello, everyone. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is using a specialty type of paper to use our alcohol inks. Now, the paper that we're using is called Yupo paper, kind of an interesting name, but the way that it works is it kind of has a shiny or glossy sort of surface that the alcohol inks flow really well on. So when you apply the inks, instead of soaking into the paper, they sit on the top and allow you to move those inks around. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up so you can see what the paper looks like. Now, this one is the cardstock. And there is also a heavy stock. So it's just a um, heavier weight or thicker paper. So I'm going to get one of each of these out just so you can see what the difference is. They work the same with the alcohol ink. So you can see the color is the same, the same brightness, but they are a little bit different in thickness. I'm not sure if you'll be able to tell on the video, but the heavy stock has a little bit more of a sturdy feel. This one is a little bit more flexible. Uh, can you use watercolor paper? You can try. However, I do believe the watercolor paper, paper will absorb the ink too quickly and you won't be able to get the same flowy result. Um, you can experiment though and see what you are able to achieve with those. Oh, it's got the glare on it. Let's move that over here. <laughs> um, but I would definitely recommend experimenting and seeing what you can do. However, this paper is what works best for uh, the alcohol inks, just because it has that more um, 
non-porous surface. So the alcohol or the watercolor paper is porous and absorbs the ink, whereas the UPO paper has that non-porous uh, surface coating. I have the distress marker or crayon alcohol. Yes, absolutely. Yes. I actually have the, uh, like the, um, it's kind of like a um, airbrush um, squeeze thing. <laughs> yes. I've actually used that previously and it works. There is also this, which is, uh, it's a blower. <laughs> it blows the air at the ink so you can move it around, but you just squeeze it like this and it blows air out into or onto your project. So we're gonna be using that. I've also heard people use um, a, a straw for a different technique. It's gonna give you a different look, but you can use different things that you have around the house as well to achieve different results. Um, so just as an example of different things that you can do with the alcohol inks, you can do the flowing technique. This is on the UPO paper. And then we also have the coasters that you can do. These are called hardcore art panels. And Michael's has these available in larger rectangles. So you could do wall art as well. Uh, but I just did a few of these with a different look. So instead of the quite as flowy look, you can get different results as well, just depending on what techniques you use. If you don't have one, use your turkey baster today. That's a perfect idea, Leslie. Thank you for sharing that. For practice, I use a uh, tag board from the Dollar Tree. Yes. Um, I've heard people using like the back of the signs for practice as well from Dollar Tree. Um, and yeah, I think that's great so that you can practice and get your technique down. And then, uh, you know, when you come to use your paper for your actual finished project, then you're not worried so much about wasting your materials. I know that that is a difficult thing for me to deal with. <laughs> I have that fear of wasting my materials. So, all right, what we're going to do is we're going to start on the uh, lighter weight. So this is just the cardstock. Uh, I've used straws, heat guns, air blowers. You can use so many things. Yes, even a bulb syringe. Yes, it's so funny all the things that you can use. <laughs> I love that you guys are all sharing your tips and tricks in the chat. Definitely keep it coming. I'm really excited to see all of this. <laughs> um, so we're going to be using the alcohol blending solution. So this is a special formula with a resin in it that helps the alcohol inks work well with the... Um, the blending solution to flow and blend on the paper without drying too quickly. We're going to be using three colors of alcohol inks. Now these are the newer large size bottles. They're two ounces and previously they came in a smaller size. Now you can get either size. We're going to be using a beautiful purple called Vineyard, a turquoise teal called Laguna, and then a bright pink called Gumball. And that's what we use to get this effect here. Um, you can absolutely substitute whatever colors you have or you prefer. There's nothing saying that you have to use exactly the same colors, but if you like these colors in this combination, feel free to use this one as well. So when you get your alcohol ink, you can take the lid off and then mine are nice and loved and dirty, <laughs> um, but it's got a nice, oh Lordy, I squeezed some of it out. Look at me, messy crafter. Um, you can uh, squeeze some of it out and then put it directly onto your surface, or you can use it on uh, like a palette. And I will show you guys that in a little bit because I will be using the mixatives um, in or the alloy, the gilded alloy as well to get that gold finish. So I'll be using that. Now I do recommend keeping paper towels on hand because as you just saw, if you're a messy crafter like me and you're not exactly the best at keeping things <laughs> uh, clean and organized, you will end up with a mess. I've heard some people use gloves so that they don't get ink on their hands like this, but I don't really mind too much. Uh, you can also use alcohol, like rubbing alcohol or something like that to help get the alcohol ink off of your hands. Um, also hand sanitizer because it has a little bit of the alcohol in it as well will help get that off. Actually, I have a little hand sanitizer here, so we'll see. Let's see what happens. <laughs> oh, now I'm smearing it all over my hands, but it is coming off. So you can see that works, hand sanitizer testing it in action. <laughs> um, but yes, so I do recommend keeping, um, oh yeah, see it's coming right off. Uh, I do recommend keeping your cleaning supplies nearby. 
You can use baby wipes, you can use paper towels. I would also recommend using something to protect your surface. Now I have this large mat on my desk. I don't care if that gets dirty. Um, Ranger sells some great craft sheets or craft mats that you can uh, use as well to protect a smaller area. So it just depends on you know, what you wanna use to protect your surface. But I would recommend using something just so that you know you don't have alcohol ink all over the place. <laughs> um, can any of these techniques be used on non-paper surfaces specifically for metal jewelry findings? You know, I honestly don't know the answer to that. Um, Patty, do you happen to know if you can use these on metal? I'm not sure. <laughs> um, I have never tried it, but now I have something on my list. You can? Oh, Ella says you can. That's amazing. Yes, you can use these on um, metal. Oh, that's amazing. Okay, well, I'm definitely gonna have to try that. <laughs> that's really cool. So what I'm gonna show you is the difference between applying the alcohol ink directly to your paper and then also putting the alcohol blending solution down first and then applying your alcohol ink. You're gonna get a different look and we're going to uh, just kind of test that out and see what it looks like. So when you squeeze your alcohol ink onto your cardstock, this is the UPO paper cardstock, you're going to get kind of just the puddle of ink. You can move it around by using your blower or whatever you have on hand. Um, if you change the direction of the blower, it's gonna change what your ink is doing. You're changing that direction that the ink is flowing. As the ink dries, you are able to see that you can get different techniques. So once it starts to dry a little bit, the, the way that it moves changes and you can get different looks. Now, if you go focusing here on the center, um, I don't know if you can tell what's happening here. Ooh, the lighting is a little bright, but you can get uh, a faded sort of lesser look in the center. I wonder if I can adjust my brightness because it looks like it's a little bit washed out. <laughs> Um, it looks like it's a little too bright on there, so you're not able to see it super well. I'm going to try to put it up closer so you can see where it fades in the middle a little bit. Maybe if I can ooh, get it in the light. So this area here is lighter and you start to be able to see the, the paper through it. Um, should you add inks lighter to darker or any specific order? It is totally up to you. Um, it depends on what look you're going for and what you're hoping to achieve. Um, hello, Terry. Welcome. <clears throat> I've tried on metal. I colored washers and put a, oh, that's awesome. Um, I would add a little blending to help, uh, especially alloy to adhere to the metal. Kara, that's a great tip. Thank you so much. Um, so you'll see when I put the alcohol blending solution in the center, you can see, I just did one drop and you can watch it move. So just that one drop of the blending solution is taking the ink and pushing it out away from where I dropped that. Now then if we use our uh, blower here, we can move the ink around and we'll do another drop. And you can see how the ink goes and moves and layers so you can get these really intricate designs that just look amazing. Now, once it starts to dry and you've got a little bit left, you can focus on certain areas and you'll get smaller lines rather than the whole thing blending out. You'll get smaller veins of the color coming out. So you'll want to experiment and see what exactly the technique that you prefer is and then kind of go with that. So obviously this gives a, a less flowy look when you do it with the little lines, but the more of the alcohol solution you use or the more that you move it around when it's wet, you're gonna get a more flowy look. Now this was applying the ink directly to the paper without applying any of the blending solution first. Now I just put a little bit of the blending solution down first and add in the color and then you can see what a nice light, like flowy effect we're getting. It's a much more diluted color because we have all of that alcohol ink solution, the blending solution there already. And I'm just doing very light uh, pressure with the blower here, just because uh, if you do it too hard, if you squeeze hard, like hard, uh, it will make the ink do things you probably don't want it to. So just to show you the difference, that was the light. And then if I do it 
more pressure with more pressure then it goes out obviously much farther so you have more control if you do it a little bit softer but again just experiment and see what you like but you can see how easy it is to get those uh, flowy results just by adding the alcohol blending solution first so here the alcohol ink kind of stayed mostly in one spot it didn't move a whole lot and over here, we put even less of the alcohol ink, but we added the blending solution first and we got a much more flowy result. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and check the comments here. I know people have been asking questions. I don't wanna miss anything. Keeping alcohol in a spray bottle to spray onto the inks makes a really neat effect. Yes, I actually do have, this is a mini mister, but you can also use, um, like a spray bottle, like the distress sprayer or something like that. This one just has water in it. Um, and uh, this one has alcohol in it though. So just so you guys know what that looks like. Um, I label mine also with washi tape. So I know which one has alcohol and which one has water because <laughs> um, you don't want to mix that up. Uh, but this is just a little spray bottle, itty bitty, and you can spray it directly on. And then you see the alcohol starts interacting with the um, alcohol ink. So it gives you kind of a splattered look and you can add as much or as little as you want and then start blending it around as well. So that's perfect. Um, as long as you're, is it good for card making? Yes. Um, so as long as you're working on a non-porous surface, so like Yupo paper, as um, Patty said, yep, you are able to uh, do this for card making. I'm a card maker as well. And uh, I definitely use these backgrounds for card making. I think that's the nice thing about alcohol ink techniques is that you are able to um, basically um, you can use them for more than one thing. So you could use this as wall art. You could use it for your card making. You could use it for scrapbooking, your journaling, anything. You can use it for so many different things, which I think is really cool. Um, yes, all the cards. <laughs> um, so the mixatives, yes, they're metallic pinks. Thank you, Patty. I really appreciate you. Thank you for being so awesome with the questions. Um, yes. Uh, can you use photography paper? I honestly don't know if you can use photography paper. Um, I would try it with the UPO paper first and just see what the results look like. So you kind of know what to expect. And then you can go and try your different surfaces. That way, uh, you know kind of what to compare it to. Unless, so if you've done the technique before and you kind of know what it's going to look like, go for it and try the different surfaces. But if you're new and you're just learning how to... Um, kind of use the alcohol inks and experiment with them, I would definitely recommend trying the UPO paper uh, just so that you get the, the results that you're hoping for. You can use glossy photo paper. I've heard that people use the backside of the photo paper, but I'm not sure. I haven't tested it myself, so I don't want to say one way or the other um, if you can, but, um, but yeah, <laughs> I think, oh gosh, my little pink one is all over the place today. Um, but yes, so as you can see, protect your surface. This is my my very well loved uh, craft mat, so I don't really mind. But I imagine if this was your dining table, you might be a little upset. <laughs> um, but yes, so you can see the difference there. And we're going to go ahead and start mixing the colors so that you are able to uh, see how they blend together and how they kind of work together when you're adding. I'm just going to set this one aside for now um, and we'll come back to it if we need to do any testing. Uh, I missed, um, I missed what you said about the photography. Oh, so some people I think I've heard use the backside of the photography paper, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, so I haven't tried it myself. So I'm, I'm nervous to give advice on it just because I haven't done it, but, um, yeah, I've heard, I oh, use the glossy side, they say. Okay. All right. Vellum is fun too. Ooh, that could be fun. If it stays sticky, put a little laminating foil over it. Takes away the sticky. All these great tips. Thanks, Carolyn. Thanks, Carolyn. Um, there are a couple tips I can give you. Try using a little. Oh, did I miss one? Um, use uh, what's the best way? Um, oh, I see about staying sticky. Yes. Okay. Yep. And you can um, you can also seal them if you need to or want to. So for the coasters. Uh, if you were going to be using these not as like wall art panels, but as actual coasters, um, there is a sealing kit 
uh, where you can use clear resin to seal them. Um, and that is an option as well. Um, and it comes with the two parts. So it is a two step process and then you are able to um, seal the alcohol ink on non porous surfaces. So that's perfect there. Um, but you don't have to do that for card making. Um, and then like Patty said, she had the tips for you on the uh, sticky surfaces. Excellent. Teflon pressing sheets to work on. Yes, I actually have um, Rangers. I'm not sure if it's Teflon, but Rangers craft mat works really well for uh, protecting your surfaces as well. Uh, and I really, really like that because then you don't have to worry so much about getting things messy. All right, we're going to start with the purple on the outside. So this is um, can you do this on grain leather? Oh my gosh, all these good ideas. I don't know. <laughs> I've really, I feel like such a beginner in that respect because I haven't tried this on so many of these different services that you guys are asking about. Um, I have so many projects that I need to try now. <laughs> um, so I'm starting out really dark here. And I'm going to add in the alcohol over uh, top and I did it underneath as well. So I started with the alcohol ink on the bottom. And then now I'm using the air blower to move around the alcohol ink and create that flowing look. I'm going to add a little bit more over here. Now you do want to leave the alcohol ink, or at least if this is the technique or the look you're going for, you want to leave the alcohol ink uh, darker in some places so that you get a nice variation on the colors. Uh, and then I'm going to go in with the turquoisey teal sort of color, and I'm going to work from this direction and I'm going to blow that over and into my purple. So the colors start working together. They start blending and you can see that nice combination here. Now the, the lighting looks a little bit dark with the, or a little bit over bright with the exposure. Can you use regular alcohol inks with these? Yep, so these are regular, these are just alcohol inks. This is the uh, Ranger, the Tim Holtz line of alcohol inks. Um, I'm not sure which other alcohol inks you were, um, asking about, but these ones are, they are regular alcohol inks. The, the special ones that people were talking about are like the alloys and the mixatives and things like that. Um, those are from the same brand and they work perfectly here as well. Um, and we're going to be using some of those, the gilded specifically for our project today. So as we move and as it dries, you'll see that using the air in the same way gives you a different result. And the colors start to blend really nicely. So I'm going to leave a little bit of this darker color on the edge over here. But the good news is if you ever find that your color is too dark, let's say I don't like the way that this looks and it looks too dark. It looks so much darker on the camera than in person. Um, but in if I think that it looks too dark, I can go and add in just a little bit of the uh, blending solution and then it lightens it up right away and as I go I can just keep using this uh, blowing tool to move the colors around and get that flowy look that I'm looking for okay and then we're also going to add over on this side I'm going to add a little more of the blending solution looks like a flying dragon that's so cool oh my gosh I see it <laughs> that's really cool. Um, it's so funny what people see in art that you don't see yourself um, until it's pointed out, or you may see something completely different than someone else sees. That's really neat. Human legs coming out. Oh my gosh, what a piece of art. <laughs> All right, so we're adding in the pink. This one was called Gumball. Now you can do these in any combination that you would like. I tend, I didn't do it this time, but I tend to work um, from the middle out. So if I wanted the pink in the middle, then I would just put the pink down first and then add a little bit of the colors on the outside, just because for me, that works a little bit better for my process um, and kind of how long I take when I'm doing my alcohol ink. Um, but can we get Yupo paper? Yes, absolutely, Cindy. You can get the Yupo paper at Michael's. 
Um, it is available. And I think Patty will share a link when she gets a second. Um, I think it's been in the chat, but she'll probably pop it in there again for you. Um, fun to use credit cards to swipe the ink across. That's a good idea. Oh, that's really cool. Uh, do you get ridges as the paint dries? You can. Yes, a little bit. Um, it depends on how much ink. For the most part, it's mostly smooth. Um, but you can feel a slight amount of texture, especially with the mixatives. Um, I feel like the mixative gives the most texture, um, but even still, it's fairly smooth. It's not a perfectly smooth finish, um, but it is fairly smooth. I don't know if you could write over top of it, but I'm sure you could, but you would probably want to use like a paint pen, maybe. Um, it looks like a lion with, I'm like, now I'm trying to see all of the things that you guys are seeing. And it's like one of those uh, tests where you look at the ink blots and you have to try to figure out what it looks like. <laughs> a galaxy lion. Oh my gosh. And then now I'm seeing like a unicorn kind of thing right here, or like a horse rearing up on its hind legs. That's so fun to try to see all the different designs. So I'm, I want this to be a little lighter here. Uh, and I want to kind of make it a little more flowy. So I am adding in more of the alcohol. Now, like I mentioned earlier, you can also use your misters and things like that. A seahorse, yes. <laughs> Um, and then, yes, you can use the, uh, the mister to add in alcohol. And then again, it gives you a different look, but it just depends on what you're going for. So it depends when you add the blending solution, you get kind of more of a flowy look. When you add the mister or a spray, it has lots of tiny little dots. So it gives you that different effect. So I'm just going to keep adding a little more. And you'll see that ink starts to move and flow. I think this is my favorite part of alcohol ink techniques. <laughs> Let's see it move. Oh my gosh, I love it. <laughs> it just looks so neat when you start mixing the colors together. And then you can actually get some really cool blends of the colors as they move and work together. And I'm going to add a little bit around the outside to soften these edges a little bit so that they're not so harsh. And I'll give it kind of a faded sort of look around the outside so that you don't have those harsh dark lines. And it kind of gives it that more, I wanna say maybe ethereal. I'm not even sure if that's the right word, uh, but it gives it that sort of like flowy, magical sort of look around the outside. And just be gentle with the air. You don't want to apply too much just because it um, does affect the pattern of the flow. Um, using a well-ventilated space. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely use a, a well-ventilated space. If you can open a window, that's good. It is alcohol. Um, and so if you're in a small area, you're definitely going to want to make sure you have good airflow. Open up those windows. That's a really good tip. Uh, to get rid of sticky, use less ink, a little sprinkle of baby powder and someone recommended laminate foil. Interesting. Uh, why wouldn't you just dab it to soak up some of the excess? Let's try it. So I have done this before. Now you'll notice that when you have like a paper towel, for example, it has texture. So when we put this on our project and we soak up the ink, see all that ink? it's going to leave behind the texture of the paper towel. So you could use this to get a cool technique if you were looking for some extra texture, um, but you can see it in there. Uh, I don't know if you can see it on the video, but oh, maybe at that angle, <laughs> um, you can see it in the alcohol ink, but you can definitely use a paper towel or something like that to soak it up. That's a good call out, um, but it's up to you if you want to do that or not it's up to you. <laughs> That's the cool thing about art and techniques, especially like this, is that you can really just make it however you want. Um, what else can be used for blending solutions? So the blending solution is a special mix. Um, it has a resin in it that helps the inks flow really well. You can use uh, like regular alcohol, um, but it doesn't work the same. So alcohol, like rubbing alcohol or things like that will work to react with the inks, but it won't work in the exact same way. So again, just experiment and see, oh, see, now you can see oh, right there, you see the texture. 
Um, you can see the paper towel texture in there. <laughs> um, we used alcohol inks on tiles and then set them on fire. What? Oh my goodness, you set them on fire? I need to know more about that. That sounds really interesting. <laughs> so let's say you soak up some of that extra color, but I still feel like this center area is too dark. I can go back in and start blending it a little more. And then we see that we can start to get some of that lighter color back in there. So the nice thing is that you don't have to worry about like with ink blending sometimes if you're doing uh, ink blending for card making and things like that. Sometimes you put too dark of a color on and you're just like, well, I guess I have to start over. It's too dark. With this, you are able to go back in and add in lighter colors, lighten it back up and the alcohol continues to react and you can keep moving it around until you're happy with it. I think that's probably like one of the best things about this is because you basically can't ruin it. You just keep adding more layers and more excitement to it. And then it just transforms into something completely different. It may not be exactly what you were hoping to achieve when you first started, uh, but it's really, really neat and you can get super unique results. And the cool thing too, is that this is one of a kind art. No two pieces will be identical. I've tried. I can't make them the same. <laughs> I will do it the exact same way and I'll get a completely different result every time. And I think that that is just special. There's something special about having truly unique and one of a kind artwork. Now, the other thing here is that you can work with this as long or as short a time as you want. You don't have to keep doing this. You can stop at one layer or two layers. You can use one color or 10. It just depends on the look that you want and what you're going for. Uh, and then once you get there, then you are done. <laughs> but until you feel like you're happy with it, you just keep going. And the nice thing too is you can always go back in and add other colors uh, or other, you can lighten it up later. So even once the alcohol ink dries, you can go back in and add more alcohol and it will reactivate and you'll be able to keep working with it. About how many five by seven pieces could be made from those three bottles? A lot, but it depends on how much ink you use. <laughs> um, so these are two ounce bottles and I've done a ton. Um, and you can see, I don't know if you can tell, but the ink is about to here of what I've used so far. So it's still up to here. Um, and I did a bunch of practice pieces and all that I've done here. Um, and it's still, and I've, so I've used them myself outside of this, but I've also done everything that we've done here and it's still like mostly full. <laughs> so quite a few. Does this paper come in larger sizes? I don't know. Uh, Patty, do you happen to know if it comes in a larger size than the five by seven? Uh, just thinking about my students at school. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, does it have to be, oh wait, hold on. How long does it take to dry? That again, depends on how much ink, uh, ink, how much ink you use. So I'm using a ton of ink, so it will take a little bit longer to dry. However, the, uh, inks, the, they sort of, um, because it has the alcohol in it, I don't know if I'm being scientifically correct, but it sort of evaporates um, the alcohol. Uh, I don't, I'm not a scientist, but in my experience, what happens is basically you have it here, it's wet, and then sort of the air just kind of comes out of it. It comes in eight and a half by 11 sizes too. Oh, that's awesome. That's really cool. Good to know. It comes in ton tons of sizes. Okay. When can you add the gold? Anytime you want. So there are, this is, this is kind of the interesting thing about the alcohol inks. So we have the alloy here. You are going to want to um, shake it first. It has the instructions on the back for you, but shake vigorously until the mixing ball rattles and the pigments mix. Now, if you don't shake it, you're going to get uneven results, but you've got your mixative here or your alloy. Um, and this is the gold. Can you hear that? The ball starts shaking around in there. Ranger does sell eight by 10, but checking to see if it's on the mic. Oh, thank you, Patty. Um, so the difference or the thing to consider when you're looking into how to uh, apply the gold, this one's called gilded. Um, if your alcohol ink is still wet, it will move more. 
if it's not, it will move less, kind of like how at the beginning we applied the ink, like on this one, we applied the ink directly to the surface while it was dry and it didn't move as much. And then this one, we applied the blending solution first and then applied the ink and it was way more flowy and liquid. It's kind of like that. It will affect how your alcohol inks react with the mixative. Now, I like to use a panel. This thing is gross because it's gotten a lot of love, but I like to use a palette here. I think I said panel, but what I meant was palette. And I just put a little bit of the gold in there. You don't need a lot, just a little. And then I'm gonna use a paintbrush so just a small little paintbrush and I dip it in there and then I find where I would like to apply it and then just put it directly on. And I like to kind of find some of the areas where I have the darker color and I sort of just dab it on there. And you can experiment and see what you like the best as far as applying the or the, uh, the alloy here with the gold. Um, if you want to make it look kind of like geodes, you know, you can do different techniques and see, I kind of like to go around the edges. Um, oh, translucent Upo, that's cool. <laughs> that's awesome. I'm going to have to look into all this stuff. Um, but so I like to kind of go around the darker edges here. Uh, and then that kind of softens the look, but also, um, you know, it just gives you a different result. But I, I like that it kind of lessens the harshness of some of those darkest colors. Um, but again, you can always play with that and kind of see. Now you see this part was still a little wet and the gold is moving a little bit more than it did in some of the other areas, but it's not moving a whole lot. Now, if you did spray this with alcohol ink or if you added the, I'm sorry, if you sprayed it with the alcohol in the mister or you use the blending solution, the mixative is going to move as well. Um, so what you can do is once you've kind of gotten your gold where you want it or approximately where you want it, um, you can go back in and try different techniques with the alcohol. So let's say I put this gold down and then I, I'm not quite happy with the way that everything looks and I want to go back in and change something, I can do that. Um, so what I would do is just take my paper towel here. I'm actually going to um, spray a little bit of the blending solution here onto my brush just to help get the gold off of it. And then I'm gonna put my blending solution into the little well here, not a ton, just a little, putting a little bit of that into the little palette. And then I'm gonna dip my paintbrush in it. And I'm gonna go around some of these areas and you'll see I'm able to lighten those areas and make them move, make the colors move without affecting the entire piece. You're able to have a little more control here. And then you can go into any of those areas you feel like maybe have a little bit too dark of color. Does that ruin the paintbrush? I have not had any problems with it. Um, just make sure that you clean the paintbrush after. Don't let the alcohol ink dry. Um, but yeah, yep, you should be okay. Thanks, Patty. Oops, I put it in the gold. <laughs> And if you were worried about it, you could always um, just have a dedicated paintbrush to your alcohol inks, maybe put a piece of washi tape on it so you know that that's the one you use with your alcohol inks. Um, and then, you know, kind of go from there and have one that you just have dedicated. Kind of like I have my little mister bottle. I tagged it with washi tape so that I know that it has alcohol in it, not water. <laughs> But yeah, so you can go around and just change the way that it looks. Now your water will get dirty. So you'll see that I have some color in here. So that will affect the way that my alcohol ink moves and the way that it looks. Um, but you can change that by either putting cleaner water or cleaning your brush. It just depends on what looks you're going for. Um, but especially since I'm working over here in the purple, I'm not really too worried about it, but um, yeah. Like I mentioned earlier though, you really can stop whenever you feel like it. Don't feel like you have to keep going. Um, if you're happy with the way that your project looks, 
you can stop at any time, which I think is really nice. Um, and the cool thing too, is that you can come back to it. So it's not like I have to finish this right now or else it's going to be ruined. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just really nice to be able to kind of get different results and different looks. Do you ever mix the alloy or mix it of paints with colored alcohol ink before you apply it? I have never tried that, but we could do it right now and see what it looks like. I've never tried it. I think it should probably work. We'll just use another one of these little wells. Let's do, we'll use the, I used like four drops of the uh, Laguna and then we'll add in the gold. Now we might get a funny color uh, just because, well, maybe not. I don't know. I'm gonna test it on this piece, the, our little scrap piece. Oh, well, the cool thing is it did change the color. So uh, mixatives mix in, but alloys separate. Yes, okay, so here's the deal. Um, this is actually really cool. The color is darker, so it did change the color a little bit, but I am getting, I don't know if you can see it. Ooh, ooh, just barely in the light there. Uh, you can see those little flecks of gold. It actually looks really cool. So that's really neat. That was a good idea. Uh, that's really neat. I never even thought to try that. But yeah, apparently, yes, you can. I think this would be really cool for painting. So like, instead of doing more of the flow sort of technique, you can paint with it. And then you get a more, um, more controlled effect of where that is going. That is really cool. Yeah, of course. Happy to do it, Amy. That is a really cool effect. I wish you could see it better. The light is just a little bit, um, it's a little bit bright with the exposure, but if you put it in the light there, you can see it. It does look really nice. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna set this one aside for now because I feel like I don't wanna keep working it because it looks kind of pretty. And I feel like if I keep working it, I'm not going to be adding a whole lot. Now this is fairly dark because we used a lot of ink. This one, I used significantly less ink, but you can see that you can get different results depending on how much ink you use, how much of the blending solution. You can go dark, you can go very light and flowy. It just depends on what you're going for and what looks you're looking, uh, looks you're looking, what look you're hoping to achieve. Now I am gonna go ahead and uh, spray off. Where did I put my little mister? There it is. I'm going to spray off my paintbrush just to make sure it doesn't get all goopy with the gold. <clears throat> Has anyone tried to rubber stamp over an alcohol ink background? Um, I, hmm, I've i used the alcohol lift ink, I think. I don't know if I've ever tried it with just like regular ink. I'm wondering if maybe archival ink would maybe work best. Um, yep, alcohol lift after it dries. Yep. Yeah, and archival ink, I bet, would work really well. Yes, okay, perfect. That's what I was just thinking. Like, I bet that would be a good ink to use. All right, let's grab another piece of Yupo. It would be nice to see a close-up. Let's see if I can, I don't think I can zoom the cam. Well, maybe, hold on. Let me see if I can zoom in. Bear with me in case this gets weird. <laughs> Okay, if it gets too grainy, let me know and I'll zoom back out. Like if the quality doesn't look very good, just let me know. So I've zoomed in here so we can see the ink move a little bit better. What we're gonna do is apply the ink first or the, uh, the blending solution first. Um, and then actually I'm gonna put this like all over kind of. So I'm gonna put it all over the whole thing. I'm gonna start with my pink in the middle, just like we did. So I'm gonna do just like maybe four drops I'm going to try to use less ink this time so that we can get a look more similar to the project example that we showed at the beginning. So I'm just very gently. Can you guys see that? Can you see the ink moving? I know my hand kind of makes the focus a little strange. Um, I'll try to keep my hand out of the way. <laughs> All right, so we're blending the ink. We're moving that around. I'm going to spray it just a little bit to the side here try to get these larger clumps of ink sort of broken up a little bit, kind of where the ink has built up and is sitting sort of in a pool. 
I'm going to blend that out just to the side just a little bit just to give us more of that flowy effect. All right. Um, and Patty, could you confirm for me, could you use the Ranger heat it tool to heat these and dry them faster on the UPO paper? I'm just wondering if I wanted to make sure it was safe before I recommended to do that, but I think <laughs> I think that would work. Um, oh, you think it will melt? UPO paper might melt. I was wondering about that. I wasn't sure because the heat it tool does get fairly, uh, it does get fairly hot. Um, so that is a good thing to know. I'm glad I asked. So if you try that, um, you just be careful. <laughs> yeah, alcohol flammable. Yes, it depends on what type of heat tool you have as well. So they are flammable. Yes. So uh, don't use fire. Um, don't use anything with fire. Heat, uh, as long as it's not like a direct flame or something like that, won't bother it, but it's more about the paper um, that, that would be causing issues. All right, so I don't want those colors to mix quite as much. So I'm gonna change direction and spray them out the other direction. I didn't want my pink to get too muddy. So I'm just using that to spray out. So when you start noticing, oh, I don't like the way that's happening, um, then you can just change direction and kind of make it work better for you again. So you'll notice that if I come from the top, I get a different result. If I come from the side, it does something different. The other side. So just experiment with those angles and see what techniques and which uh, designs and things that you like the best. I'm gonna wanna clean up this edge. So I'm gonna add some alcohol uh, ink at the top or the uh, alcohol blending solution here in just a little bit, but we're gonna add a little bit of the purple in as well. I've done it with a heat gun and it was fine I'm using a hairdryer. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I bet the hairdryer would work. All right, so I'm gonna be a little lighter with the purple because I know that this is quite dark and I don't wanna add too much of the dark. So what I'm also gonna do is add next to the purple, a little bit of the alcohol blending solution. And then that should help me kind of lighten up the color a little bit. Now the alcohol ink that was over here previously has dried or the alcohol blending solution. So that's why my ink isn't blending super well. So you'll see it's kind of more stagnant over here. That's because when I put the alcohol ink down on the surface, it dried before I got my purple over there. So then now it's not moving as well. So if you want to keep it moving, you just add a little bit more of the blending solution and don't be, uh, don't be afraid to go in small amounts. You don't have to go in super heavy handed. You don't have to add a ton. You can go in really lightly. And then if you need more, add more. Uh, using a hair, you said using a hair, move the ink around by picking up the paper. Yep, you can absolutely do that. I don't know if mine's wet enough right now to do it, but yep, you can move the paper. So you'll see, you'll get kind of more, ooh, it's moving a little bit right here, <laughs> um, but not too much because it's drying a little. But yes, you can use the, uh, the flow of gravity and all of that to change the way that your ink is moving. Now with the flowing sort of effect, that may change what you want to do with it because you, don't, you may not want the drips, um, but it just depends on what you look like, what look you're going for. I've used a straw too, but it can cause you to breathe it. Oh, interesting. Okay, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, because if you were using the straw, the straw, then you might breathe it back in. That's a good tip too, to kind of be aware of. Oh my goodness. But yeah, so you can see the different results that we're getting just by using different directions with the air. And the cool thing is that you don't need a ton of different things to make these alcohol ink backgrounds or coasters or whatever. You don't need a ton of supplies, which I absolutely love because you can get into this and start making beautiful projects without having to go overboard and spend a ton of money um, buying 8,000 different uh, you know, supplies and, oh, I need to, for this technique, I need this thing. 
and the, you don't need all of that for alcohol ink, which I think is really cool. Um, you might drool out of the straw for blowing too much. Oh no, <laughs> Rachel. <laughs> Um, oh, look, Moby says the same thing. I never even thought about, have you used the splatter brush? Yes, Diane. Okay, so I actually have the splatter brush right here. It doesn't work as well for this particular technique, but since we're experimenting and I want you guys to kind of see all of the different things you can do, we're gonna go ahead and just do it. I'm not worried about whether or not this looks good in the end. Like, you know, if it looks exactly like what we were going for, not that if it looks good, I would like it to look good. Um, but what I do, you can do this a number of ways. Uh, what I like to do is just put a little bit in, in my little palette and then I dip the splatter brush in and then I pinch. So I pinch this part and then just let it go. And look at that. <laughs> it's so cool. It's such a neat effect and I just love the way that it looks. Then you can take your blowing tool and spread them out depending on how much of the alcohol you've used. Yep, so this one is the splatter. It's alcohol, so it's of uh, the blending solution. So I put it right here. I just put just a little bit in the little well here in the palette, dip the brush in it like that and then pinch and like let it go. Look how cool that is. <laughs> a toothbrush, yes, that would be really cool as well. Look how neat that looks. Oh, there it goes flowing. Ooh, I actually really like this. This is so neat. That's a completely different effect and it looks really cool. I actually really like that. And I'm gonna blow that the areas out that have a little bit more so we get kind of a more interesting effect. The only thing that I want of this is that it has just a little bit more of the the blue or the turquoisey teal, the Laguna color. Oh, I'm sorry, my hand was in the way. Yes, I will definitely show it. Hold on just one sec and I'll pull it up again. Um, now the problem is my hand has to be kind of over it in order to spray. I'll try to do it from the side maybe. All right, let's see. I'm gonna add a little bit more in. I'm gonna add a little more of the blue here and then over here just to kind of give us a place so you can see where it was. Um, okay, so I'm going to blow that out just a little bit to spread it out. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and dip our splatter brush into the alcohol blending solution and I'm going to try to do it from the side. <laughs> so I'm pinching. There we go. Okay, yep. It's a little hard for me to do it from this angle, but it's still working. <laughs> I hope that that was better and that you could see that a little better. Much better, thanks, absolutely. So there's that, look how cool that is. What a neat, oh, and look our, oh, it's shiny. Our, uh, our ink is moving. <laughs> now the cool thing to note is that you can also do this with the alloy. So put that in there and then we're going to go ahead and dip that in and we're going to do the same thing. And just flick that on and you can add those gold flecks without having to go in individually. Now let's say you're like, ah, I don't love the way this looks. You can go in like maybe it's a little too droplet formation for you. You can go in with your sprayer or mister. I would come from a higher angle. So the closer you are, the more pronounced the dots are going to be. But if you come from up here, like up high, and then just spritz down, it will blow or move around the ink without making individual drops quite so noticeable. Like down here, uh, you'll see the inks. Well, that's actually helping it move a little bit more. What I like to do is kind of experiment with how I'm pressing down the, uh, the mister top. So if you do it very slowly, more of the, the liquid comes out at once instead of just a little spritz, you kind of get like a little drop uh, and then you can blend it a little differently. So experiment with that as well. Um, and you'll kind of get different effects there. So I'm going to go ahead and spray this just to kind of 
lighten it up just a little bit and move those colors just a little. But I think that the way that this looks is pretty neat. Now, if you want to, if you want to break up those little droplets a little bit more, you can just go in over the whole thing apply just a little bit of the blending solution. You don't need a ton, but just enough to get it moving again. And that will get rid of some of those droplet looks. So if you don't want quite as many of those and you want it to go back to being a little bit more smooth, you just add in a little bit of the uh, blending solution and then it helps it move again. So that's the cool thing. Like I mentioned earlier, you just keep working at it until you're happy and then you're done and you can make such drastically different results. Um, gosh, I wish the light was picking this up better, but it has the beautiful gold in it. Oh, it looks so much better in person than on the camera. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to get it to show the shine, but the trick is to know when to stop. You are not wrong. You are so, so right. Um, do you, will this be permanent or do you have to seal it? Okay, so you don't have to seal it, but you are, uh, you can. If you would like to, I wouldn't recommend probably doing it on the paper, like the Yupo paper, but if you were doing coasters like these ones, something like this, you can use the clear resin sealing set. Uh, and then you are able to put that clear resin right on top. It's a two part system. Um, you can pick this up at Michael's as well. Um, but yeah, you can seal those so that you would be able to use them for the, um, the coasters. Does anybody have any questions? We're, we're running quite to the end of our time now, but I wanted to take a second to see if anyone had questions or anything that they wanted to know that we didn't cover um, just before we, before we kind of head out for the day. I'm so excited that you all were here. Can you talk about the mixatives? So the mixatives are, um, they, well, I wasn't planning on talking about them, but they work similarly in that you do have to shake them up. Um, thank you, Diane, I appreciate you. Um, oh, I'm trying to get it to uh, loosen up a little bit here. I can't get my mixing ball to rattle yet. So you wanna keep shaking until you hear that mixing ball. <laughs> it's not rattling. Hmm. How do you store what's left of the inks in your tray? Um, so he, these ones here on the palette, I actually just let them dry. <laughs> I don't bang it on the table. You think, sorry if this is loud. I don't know. It's not working. <laughs> I haven't used this one yet. Um, I haven't gotten around to using it. So it's probably been quite a while that it's been sitting. So sometimes if you go a long while without using them, they can uh, be a little bit more difficult to get moving, but I sometimes try just in a different direction mixing them. I think it's starting to get loose. Mm, you can let them dry. Yes, exactly. Yep, I just let them dry in here. Um, and then if I wanna reactivate them later, I just, um, I put the a little bit of alcohol ink or blending solution back in. Um, mixed tips are a metallic pigment. <clears throat> White is just a pigment and alcohol based. Thank you, Patty. So um, the difference is just how you would use them. So the, um, uh, yeah, the, the white. So the, um, the alloy, Patty, is the alloy one of the mixatives? Because I know, or is it, is that a different category? Because I know the alloy is the gold that we used. It's similar. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So it's just a different look um, that you're going to get. Yep. So the gilded has that metallic, which we saw here with our projects. Can I use the hashtag and share my work? Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. And then if you post anything like on Instagram or anything like that, um, definitely tag me um, on, yeah, on Instagram, it's at love Jess Co. And then um, on, on YouTube, I have a YouTube channel as well, which is Love Jess Co. <laughs> um, or the channel is just called Love Jess, but it's uh, youtube.com slash Love Jess Co. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Um, so we'll have to see if maybe if we can give that feedback to Ranger and Michael that you guys would like to see more classes on how to use the mixatives and things like that, more in-depth look at how all of this works, uh, then um, we can definitely do that as well. 
love the one you just showed the close up of. Yes. So I love the way that these turned out. Um, so this one was the most flowy. Then we kind of have an intermediate flow. And then we have this one, which was just an experiment of all sorts of things. <laughs> um, we tried a whole lot of different stuff on this one. And um, I still think it looks cool. But, you know, pick which one is your style and then go for that. All right, I'm going to switch over to the other camera. Hold on just a sec. Oh, oh, that's really close. <laughs> Hold on, let me zoom out. Whoa. Hi. <laughs> that was very, very close because I zoomed in the camera on the other one. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> thank you all so, so much for hanging out with me today. Patty and I really enjoyed having you here. Michael, thank you so much for having us. Um, if you all have questions or anything you would like to know, feel free to contact us on social media. We'd be happy to help you and work any sort of questions that you may have. Um, if you want to rewatch the video, this class will be available within about 48 hours, possibly Monday on the Michaels website. Uh, and then same thing with the YouTube channel. Um, it will be on the Michaels YouTube channel for you to watch the whole replay if the class was recorded. So everything we talked about, all the things we tried will be available for you all. Um, Yes, absolutely. If you all have your projects done and ready, share them, show them. I would love to see them. I see Barbara's got hers up. Yes, <laughs> it looks beautiful. And then that I see yours as well. I am so excited that you guys were here and experimenting uh, and trying everything out. I'm so, so excited. Let me go to the, the gallery view so I can see you all. Um, Leslie, I see yours. Oh my goodness. Connie, Amy. Oh my goodness. Did you do that while we were in class today? You all are so talented. I am so excited. Wow. That's beautiful. Terry, it looks amazing. Oh, holy moly. You guys are awesome. Wow. Domino. Oh, I love all that purple. Fab. Oh my goodness. I am so, so excited. Thank you all for sharing your artwork with me. That is so special. I'm so excited to see everything that you guys have been working on. I appreciate you all so much for being here. Again, if you have questions, just reach out and let us know. I hope that I'll see you in another class really soon. Um, but we're going to go ahead and wrap it up for today. Have a wonderful day and a wonderful weekend. And until next time, keep crafting.